Hey guys, what's up? Uh, today is the Y90 treatment for my intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. Um, if you're new to the channel, my name is Justin and I'm going through quite a few different health things right now and so I'm just trying to educate and keep everybody updated on what all is happening. Um, brief background, I've had two liver transplants earlier in my life, uh, one when I was 16, the second one was seven years later, and I am now 11 years out from my second transplant, and was listed back in February of 2020 for a third transplant, and then come July of this year, they did an MRI and found a tumor in my bile ducts. Um, after some more testing and biopsies, they determined that it was ICCA, which stands for intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, and it is a cancer of the bile ducts, and um, pretty difficult to treat um, as far as location and because of my medical background and history and things like that. Um, it is the only of the three cholangiocarcinomas that they do not do liver transplants for here at Mayo Clinic. Um, I'm getting most of my medical treatment done here at the Jacksonville branch of the Mayo Clinic because that's where I've had, had my second liver transplant and that's where my medical records are and who I've been seeing for the last 11 years. So they've been fantastic um, with all of my liver stuff. and. The oncology team has come around and made the decision to go with Y90 or Yttrium 90 treatment for this intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. Um, today is my actual procedure day. So we've been waiting about three weeks since the mapping for the uh, dosimetry, which is basically how much and how radioactive the beads need to be before they're inserted into the tumor and today is the actual procedure. Um, my check-in is a little bit later this morning, and then the procedure will be this afternoon. Um, for anybody else that's about to go through this, let me just give you kind of the rundown of what this procedure entails real quick. Um, basically, you go in, you get prepped, you know, IV, hospital gown, kind of standard stuff and they take you back to the procedure room where they will give you just a little bit of pain medicine basically to relax you and kind of help keep your mind off of the insertion of a catheter. Uh, they go through one of the big veins in the groin and they will fish their way up to the tumor in the bile ducts of the liver and at that point, they do have you do different breathing exercises as far as holding your breath so they can get into the actual blood vessels they need that feed the tumor. And at that point, um, they will go ahead and insert these radioactive beads. Then they retract the catheter and stitch up the vein and the skin, and that's it. You're done. Um, they keep you back in the hospital room for another hour or two just for observation, make sure that there's no complications with um, any blood vessels collapsing, any bleeding, any um, you know loss of feeling in your legs or you know anything weird that would happen. All pretty low risks, um, but risks nonetheless, so they kind of keep you and observe you. And then we went ahead and decided to spend the night here in town. Um, they told us we didn't have to this time, but it was a very kind of hesitant, you don't have to, so we went ahead and decided just to stay here tonight in case anything happens. Uh, we can just head back to the hospital's ER and be on site rather than trying to find someone and explain everything that just happened at home. So um, that's what today entails as far as expected outcomes of today. They are hoping that the dosage that they have chosen will destroy about 90 to 95% of the tumor. And the reasoning that they're not going after the full 100% is because of its location and my other complications as far as having primary sclerosis and cholangitis and my liver starting to fail and things like that. So um, if...
that's the tumor. The goal is to knock about that much out. And then this little section here is kind of the 5% they don't know if they're going to get or not. Um, and the problem is if they went and knocked everything out, the radiation continues to kind of bleed out, right? Well, on this side here is my good liver. Sorry, I know it's really hard to see. Um, and they don't want to destroy too much of the good liver. So they're hoping for 90-95%. Um, after this, I start chemo treatments. So every two weeks, I will have a chemo treatment um, up here. And hopefully that will destroy the rest of it, or at least keep it from spreading. And we will get a one-month scan to see how much of the tumor was destroyed. And the radioactivity continues to destroy the tumor up to three months. So we'll get another scan at three months and see how everything went. At that point, you know, there's a couple different things that they could do if it didn't get 100% of it. Um, we go in with a lower, more targeted dose of Y90 to destroy that other little 5%. Um, we could do external beam radiation, which is uh, a non-invasive treatment where they actually kind of fry it with a laser beam from the outside of your skin. Um, we could, you know, treat it with chemo, we could um, do thermal ablation, which is where they basically go in and cook it with uh, some microwaves and try to do it that way. And um, basically the goal is to get 100% of this tumor cleared out and killed and keep it from spreading anywhere else. So um, it's a nervous day, you know. Um, Obviously, I've never had any kind of radiation put in my body before. I've never had to deal with cancer. Um, I've had family members who have, have dealt with different types of cancer and, you know, just the, the movie version of cancer, the TV version of cancer, and, and different things like that. And I've always thought of cancer as this, you know, lifelong battle. And, um, and it still will be. Uh, still have to be very, very careful, still have to make sure that nothing new pops up, um, make sure that this hasn't spread anywhere else, things like that. But the goal is to fry as much as there is there now with this. And um, it's still a battle. It's nerve-wracking, you know. Um, I don't call it cancer very often because it's just a got such a negative feeling to it and uh, I just think that we're going to be able to beat this thing and we're going to clear it out and hopefully the next step would be finding somebody that's willing to do a liver transplant so that I'm back to 100% and um, we've been talking to basically everybody that you can possibly imagine as far as liver transplants go um, but we just spoke with Tampa General Hospital this past week and they have some exciting things going on um, I'll update you about that in another video here shortly but yeah I am two hours away from check-in from this procedure about four hours from it starting and we'll see how things go thanks guys